Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? Okay, let's do a time and temperature check. I'll give you a little hint. It's earlier today than I usually vlog, and it's not as hot as when I usually vlog. So those are your two hints for today. Na, 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 na. Okay, the time is currently 4.30 p.m., and the temperature is, okay, when we were coming back from uh, lunch in Alex's car, it said it was, I think it said it was 76 or 78 degrees. Oh, yesterday it was like 87 or something, so let's see. 10 degrees. Oh, it's 76 and sunny. Alex asked me, he said, are you going to go to the pool? And I was like, I don't think so. My neighbor is up at the pool right now. But I was like, I don't think so because I'm used to being in Mexico at the pool on the beach when it's like 85. But I got to get back into the Indiana groove of the weather here in the pool. I might go up later for a swim. Um, I didn't go yesterday. It actually, so if you watch my vlog from yesterday, my birthday vlog, um, I started it off by showing you guys a thunderstorm that we were having. Um, I think I still have it on my Instagram. Hold on a second. I posted it on my Instagram story too, right after I got done filming. Or maybe it was before I started filming. I don't know. But anyway, I posted it on my Instagram story and I said, oh no, it's already down from here. Um, well, let's see if I can, sometimes if like people comment on it, I can pull it up. Let's see or somebody liked it or something. Da -da -da. I, can't, I don't think I'm going to be able to pull it up. But anyway, it was like when I started my vlog yesterday, it was thunderstorming like crazy. Um, where is it at? I can't find it on here. Oh, you know what? I actually, I saved it to my, my roll, <laughs> my camera roll. I saved it. I don't know why. So, so I was like, I want to look back on this and, or maybe I didn't save it. I thought I did. My Aunt Susie. Um, I will like edit her out of the picture, but she was sending me these pictures yesterday because her, some of her family is at, her family is really good friends with, um, Olivia Colpos, who got married yesterday, I guess, her husband's family. So my Aunt Susie is really good friends with his family. And so some of her family was at the wedding. And so she was sending me pictures from the wedding. And I was, and I, this is so funny because I think I, I might've talked about this when I was, um, so my Aunt Susie is like a huge, huge, huge football fan. This is my mom's best friend that lives in Denver and well, outside of Denver. But anyway, she has like Broncos tickets. She's had Broncos tickets forever. And, um, so she always goes to like the, every Broncos game and stuff like that. And she just loves football. And so she knows his, well, she sent me this message yesterday. Hold on a second. Um, she texted me. Let me see if I can find her text because she was sending me these pictures. Hold on a second. Here it is. She was sending me these pictures and she said, um, happy, happy 52nd. And then she sent me these pictures of Olivia and then her niece and then Jackson, Olivia's assistant. This was before she sent this to me because when Susie came to visit me before, she was like, oh, I know somebody that kind of does the same thing as you. And I was like, what do you mean? And she was like, well, I know somebody that's like online. And she's like, she's like, you're an influencer, aren't you? And I was like trying to explain to Susie. I was like, I don't really like that word. I don't really think that I'm an influencer. I just make videos. And she's like, well, I know this influencer. And she was like, she kind of does the same thing as you. You guys probably, you might know each other. And I was like, who is it? And I had, I'd never heard of her before. I, I know, crazy that I watch pageants and stuff. And I was like, she said, do you know Olivia Colpo? And I was like, I, that name sounds really familiar to me, but I don't know her. And she goes, well, she's like, you know, she does stuff other than what you do online and whatever, because Susie's watched some of my videos. And she's like, she does something different than what you do online and things like that. And she was like, um, but you like pageants. And she was in pageants. And I was like, oh, and she was like, she was Miss Universe. And I was like, oh, that's how, that Olivia, that's who it is? And I had no clue. And so... I was telling Alex, and Alex was like, this girl that went on um, our trip with us, she and her boyfriend, like, this was when Susie was visiting. I don't even, well, I could look and see, because she texted me the pictures at that time to send to Alex's friend. Hold on a second. Where is Susie's text message? I just looked it up from yesterday. Oh, here it is. Okay, so she was here, when would this have been? In May. Oh, because I texted her, and I was like, hey, Susie, so good seeing you. Um... 
So anyway, so she sent me the pictures because because I was telling her. Oh, this was I texted her afterwards, and I was like, "Can you send me the pictures?" Alex's friend is like loves her, and I wanted to show her. Um, so she sent me the pictures of her and her. I can I don't know if I can cut Susie out of the picture, but. Not that Susie would even really care, but there's Olivia Colpo and Susie. And so anyway, she's sending me these pictures. She's like, she's the sweetest girl. She's so nice, blah, blah, blah. We went on vacation with her and stuff like that. And so I was telling Alex, because I told Alex, and he was like, oh my God, so-and-so is like obsessed with her. And I said, I, like, should I know who this is? <laughs> like, this is how I don't like know a lot, right? And he was like, Peter, she won Miss Universe. She's like a huge influencer. And I was like, oh, okay. And um, I was like, well, she's not problematic. <laughs> I probably don't know her. Now you all will be like, oh yeah, she's real problematic. I don't know anything about her. I just poured myself some iced coffee. Uh, I'm trying to use these cups this summer. So now that we're a month into the summer. But anyway, Susie was texting me yesterday and sending me pictures from the wedding that her niece and some of her other family was there. I was going to read you that. Oh, here, I do have the voicemail message. She said, My niece is in Rhode Island for Olivia Culpo and Christian Mac McCaffrey's wedding. She's been sending us pictures all day. What an event. I'm so excited for her. She's such a sweet girl. Blah, blah, blah. And she was like, I haven't talked to you in a while. Blah, blah, blah. blah. Let's catch up. So anyway, she sent me this whole, like, voicemail. Anyway, I was just reading off the voicemail thing. But wasn't that, isn't that so funny? So anyway, um, I texted Alex's friend yesterday. And I was like, because um, she knew, like, the connection because I'd sent her the pictures before. And I was like, um, guess where my, like, Aunt Susie's, like, uh, niece and like kids and stuff are at and she was like she knew immediately <laughs> she was like Olivia Coppola's wedding and I was like yeah and so but she, anyway Susie was sending me all those pictures look like a beautiful wedding but <clears throat> I don't know why I even thought of that today oh so yesterday I was starting with the thunderstorm so oh that's what I was looking for I was looking I thought I saved it I thought I saved it the video of it I guess I didn't that's how I got in looking at it no, but I saw these these shirts on Instagram that I love. It's the brand is First Pork Company, and they're kind of like deconstructed sweatshirts and stuff. And this one says Paris Hockey. I don't like that one as much, but there's other ones I like. Where is the? I thought I saved this video. I guess I didn't. Hmm. Well, I guess I didn't save it. But anyway, I feel like some people like message me about it. Maybe I can. Um, not that you guys really even care about this at all. I got so many DMs for my birthday yesterday, and you guys left so many comments on my video. First of all, I just want to say thank you so much for making me feel so special. I really, really appreciate it. Oh, wait, here it is. Okay. What pull up still? This is what it was like in Indianapolis yesterday. It was like pouring down rain and it was so windy and stuff. So anyway, um, I got done vlogging and Alex was like, he was upstairs in the bedroom, <laughs> bedroom and he goes, are you going to go swimming? And I was like, it's pouring down rain. He goes, yeah, I can hear it. And he goes, but are you still going to go to the pool? I was like, no, I don't think I'm going to go to the pool. And so, um, but yesterday was just like, but yesterday, yesterday was just such a fantastic birth, birthday. It just, it, I rested and I relaxed. I talked to a bunch of people on the phone. I talked to Tanya, talked to uh, Mel, um, talked to Nikki, talked to a bunch of people yesterday and my dad and my stepmom and Caroline and it just was such a nice day and it was exactly what I wanted. I just wanted to relax. We watched some TV last night. We caught up on RuPaul's Drag Race. We had to watch this week's episode. Um... And then we got Cheesecake Factory last night again. <laughs> so starting tomorrow, I'm like walking, eating healthy again and stuff like that. My neighbor was out sitting out there when I first started. She must have gone inside. But anyway, um, it was just the perfect birthday. It was the perfect birthday. I got a, a nap late because we got done with RuPaul's Drag Race late last night. And I was like, I'm going to take a nap. And Alex is like, well, I'm going to watch like some TikToks and stuff like that. And I was like, okay. So he got upstairs in bed and I like lay down for like an hour. And I woke up. And I told Boo Radley, I was like, this is when you're, like, when your dad's out of town. <laughs> we take naps late, like, at midnight. <laughs> and so I got up at, like, 1 or something like that. Because I really just wanted to take a nap on my birthday. But anyway, so I got up at, like, 1. And, um, it actually, like, so that's what I was going to say. Like, a half an hour after I, get done, I got done vlogging, it, like, cleared up. Um, 
I had to like clean off the whole porch because it had like soaked everything. It had soaked the cushions. I just noticed over there that that cushion is still like soaking wet. So it like soaked all the cushions out here. I like usually try to put them up. That chair I don't worry about so much, but this chair I always like put the cushions up. I think I did that yesterday. I showed that in my vlog. Um, but like the whole front porch was drenched. This table was drenched. This table was drenched. I still haven't put my new table together. That will probably be on Peter Does Stuff this week. So anyway, um, cleaned off all that and then ate dinner and then we watched. I, I like ordered all this food. Oh, I also ordered insomnia cookies last night. <laughs> they were so good. But insomnia cookies doesn't have, they're just real basic cookies. Um, but I hadn't ordered them in a long time and I was really craving them yesterday. And what I was really craving was, I'm not like a big chocolate chip cookie fan. Like my favorite like cookie, go-to cookies are peanut butter and snicker doodle always. I love lemon cookies as well. Um, but anything peanut butter. And so I got like this big, I got Alex a chocolate chip chunk cookie because he loves chocolate chip. And I got like this big like Reese's peanut, it had like literally like those miniature Reese's, it was so good. Um, and then I got Dolce de Leche cookie. It was really good. And the peanut butter cookies were like fantastic. And when they came, they were still warm. Well, that was the problem. I ordered them before I ordered, ordered dinner last night. And so when they came, um, they were so warm and I ate like three of them right away. And then I wasn't really hungry for dinner, but I was like, it's my birthday. So I'm going to order this dinner. And so I ordered stuff for us and I was really full and it's all sitting in the refrigerator, <laughs> including the nachos, which probably won't, are probably no good today. But anyway, um... So yeah, so I got up last night, and then, um, I talked to somebody late last night. I don't remember who I talked to. But then I watched, um, an episode of Sister Wives, because I'm trying to keep up with that and get through it. So I think I'm on, like, the sixth, fifth or, no, I finished the fifth episode last night. Sixth episode of season two. I think there's 14 episodes. Um... And so, it, it's kind of, to be honest with you, it got kind of, it's gotten a little boring. Um, people told me, like, the first three seasons are really, really good. It's gotten a little boring. I'm going to keep up with it, but I'm just kind of like, I don't know, after, like, the hype and the whole polygamy thing and whatever. The thing is about this show, like, I'm going to do a whole video about it on my Peter Does Stuff channel. But the thing about this show, if you watch Sister Wives, I, if you've watched it, you'll understand what I'm saying. And if, like, because now that I've watched enough, like, this is kind of, like, my mentality. If you've watched it, you'll understand what I'm saying, probably. And if you haven't ever watched it, like, this will make no sense to you. Because it wouldn't have made sense to me if somebody had said it to me before I had started watching it. But if you're going to watch the show and you're going to have, and you're going to, like, enjoy the show, you kind of have to, like, you have to live in their reality a little bit. Like, that, I mean, just... You don't have to agree with their lifestyle or whatever. I mean, I, I personally, I don't agree with polygamy. It's whatever. It's their choice. They can do whatever they want. But anyway, um, I mean, it is against the law. But other than that, but like the thing is, is that you kind of have to buy into what they buy into if you're going to watch the show and enjoy it, right? Like you can't, I mean, he is just so, he's like so sexist and misogynistic and um, it's interesting because I noticed this last night and I hadn't noticed this before. He refers to Mary's daughter as his daughter. And then he refers to Christine's kids as his kids. Like, and I don't know if it was just a slip of the tongue, but he did it like, I think twice last night. Cause it was, the episode I watched was he and Christine going to, um, Las Vegas. Maybe it was Christine's kids, but I think it was Janelle's kids. Maybe it was Christine's. I don't know. But he even refers to Robin's kids, who are not biologically his kids. It was from her first marriage. He refers to them as his kids, and they call him dad and stuff like that, which is so weird to me, and I don't know if this comes out in later seasons, but, like, how Ro Robin's ex feels about this, because I would have to think that Robin's ex has some kind of feelings about, because she said she was in a monogamous relationship, so that, that has to mean, I don't know, really, I'm not, like, I'm trying not to Google search anything because somebody commented on the video the other day and like, and I know I spoil shows, so I'm, you know, whatever, but somebody was like, said a bunch of stuff about it. And I was like, I already knew most of that stuff anyway, but I'm like, if, if I know everything about the show, I'm going to get bored and I'm going to stop watching it. So, but the thing is, is that you kind of have like, you have to buy into it a little bit, like, and be like, okay, like this is normal for them and just kind of watch it for what it is. If you constantly are judging it and like, oh, this is so weird and this is that or whatever, like you can't, you can't enjoy the show. You kind of have to like buy into like, this is normal for them, right? Like, I don't know. Um, oh, this is what I was going to say, but he refers to somebody's kids. It's not Mary. 
Um, I think it's Janelle or Christine's, because it's not Robin's, because he calls Robin's kids his own kids. And like I said, I don't know if, like, her ex-husband comes out later and says something. I, I'm trying not to Google search this stuff, because I know it'll take me. I know that one of the kids, like, died tragically this year, and that's going to be in, like, the next season. And I'm like, I, I think it's Logan, but I'm not sure. And so I'm, I'm not trying to, like, look into any of it. Um, I remember when the articles came out. And so, anyway, I don't know who it is, I, I, you know. Um, but, like, he's the oldest son, so I... Anyway, I, I, don't, I don't know who it is. I, I don't wish that on any of them. The kids all seem very, very nice to me. Um, I will say what's interesting is, like, like, the second season is when they're getting all the media coverage. And, like, the cameras are, like, on them and things like that. And um, I'm probably completely wrong about who it is. And now I'm feeling bad that I even said that. So I don't know if I'm, I, I don't know who I'm, if I'm wrong. I mean, there's, at this point, there's 16 kids. I don't know if there's more kids down the road. But, um... The kids seem super, super normal to me uh, for, like, living in this lifestyle. I actually looked it up last night. There was one thing. Hey, how are you? Are you grilling? What are you having? Rainbow trout. Rainbow trout. All right. Enjoy. It's good to see you. Um, I did Google last night because... I knew that polygamy was, um, that, that, like, the Mormon church had, um, disavowed polygamy, like, 100, 200 years ago or something like that. So I didn't know that about the Mormon church. And this is, like, fundamental Mormonism. But what I didn't know, and I, well, I did know that it was illegal. But I thought, like, in Utah, like, they kind of, like, turned a blind eye to it a little bit. I thought they kind of just, like, looked past it. I didn't really know until this investigation happened, and that's why I started Googling it. So I looked online. I was like, how many polygamous, like, families are there in the United States? It's something like fifty to 60,000 polygamous families in the United States. What is that noise? That seems like a huge amount of polygamous families to me. In the United 50 to 60... Maybe it was fifty to 60,000 people. It sounds like somebody's starting a lawnmower. No, he's blowing over there. Because he's getting ready to... How many... He always cleans his driveway before he uh, cooks out. How many... Polygamous... I also know how to spell polygamous now. <laughs> In case you need me to do it for a spelling bee. Polygamous... Families... This is in Utah, in the U.S. 50,000 polygamous families. But one estimate is that there are 50,000 polygamous families in the United States today. And this came out in 2020. For most of the last century, polygamists have been left alone by the law unless word creeps out that a sect is engaging in other crimes, child abuse, forced child marriage, and the R word, and on and on and on. Um... So, like I said, if you're going to watch it, you kind of have to, like, watch it, like as if it's normal. Like, you can't, like, go into it and be, like, all judgy-judgy or you're not going to enjoy the show. Um, so, I will say that there are, some, there are some rather endearing moments on there. It's interesting because... Like I said, I'm only on season two, okay? And I know that they're, like... I think he's only with one of them right now or something like that, but... Somebody said that in the comment section. That's why I know that. But I, other than that, like, I, I think I knew that already anyway. But, like, Mary really seems to be in love with him. Christine really seems to be in love with him. Robin seems to be in love with the idea of the family. And Janelle seems to be completely indifferent. Like, she could be on her own, alone, doing her own thing. <laughs> like, she doesn't seem like she cares. Like, it was interesting because they've been married, like, 17 years or something. And they go on this, like, rock climbing hike. And he's like, yeah, Janelle, like, didn't know that I wanted to be kissed and held and stuff like that. And she's like, yeah, that was just, like, a year ago that I started. I was like, a year ago? 16 years into your marriage is when you started, like... But y'all have six kids. So you're obviously just doing it for the kids. Like... There's no, like, romance or anything like that. So I don't know if, like, more of that comes out later in the later seasons or whatever. But it's interesting. So I watched one episode of that last night. But I really wanted to finish season two of Worst Roommate Ever. Because um, I feel like I need to go back and watch the first season. I was talking to Tanya about it because I watched it with Tanya. And we must have just, like, had it on the background while we were, like, talking. I feel like we watched it over two days. Maybe it was one day. I don't remember. But it was... Um, so anyway, it was like one day that she came to pick me up. It was after the accident. And she came to pick me up. It was like closer to when like I came back to YouTube. 
because I stayed over there. And we started it one day and we finished it the next day, but I feel like it was just on in the background. I remember a lot of the cartoon stuff is what I remember. And this one has it, but it doesn't have it as much as season one where they do like animation of like what's going on. Okay, this is literally, I don't, this is what I don't remember. I don't, so I finished three, I finished three episodes out of four. I have to watch the last one tonight. What I don't remember is it being as true crime centered as this season is. I mean, in each of these episodes, it's like somebody is either murdered or it's attempted murder. I mean, the first episode of season two, Tanya and I were talking about it last night, because I was like, we watched the first season together. And she's like, yeah. And I was like, do you remember it? And she was like, uh, no. <laughs> I was like, I don't either. I was like, she was like, I think that, she was like, it was when you came and stayed over here that one night. I was like, yeah. I was like, I remember that. I was like, but I don't remember, like, I don't remember, like, specific, like, watching it. She was like, I think we had it on the background, and you know, like, whatever. I was like, I don't really remember it. Because Tanya and I, like, back in the day, we would always watch, like, Nancy Grace or The Housewives, and we'd have it on the background. I could watch a whole Housewives episode and not remember what happened years ago, right? So, anyway, I guess Kenny Moore got fired from Real Housewives of Atlanta. I don't know. I wonder if they're going to show what happened on the season, because the season's supposed to come out, like, later this summer or early this fall with her showing those pictures and stuff like that. I'm like... I, I really, truly, in this moment, do feel like I'm having a conversation with one of my good GDs, like Tanya Jean, on the phone. Um, because I'm just, like, skipping from, <laughs> from topic to topic, and that's how our conversations are. So, hey, how are you? It's good to talk to you. Um, but, like, she got fired from the show. She didn't just get suspended. She got, like, fired, fired. I was kind of blown away, if you want to know the truth. I honestly thought Kenny, Kenny Moore was smarter than that to do something. And now, like, people are saying, like, Brandy Glanville, of course, she's not the voice of reason, but she came out and said that, where was production? Did they, like, push her to do these things? I, I'm, I think... Like, Alex said she opted not to come back, but that's not what I'm reading online. I'm reading that she got fired, so I don't know what it is. But she was suspended pending the investigation, and then they decided not to bring her back for the season, but they were just going to have it be the season. I guess she maybe decided that she wasn't coming back or whatever, or they fired her. And I don't know. I don't understand it. The thing that's so strange to me is... Like, I think Kenya Moore is beautiful, and there's been moments that I love her, like with her daughter Brooklyn. I think she's so sweet and things like that. The one thing about Kenya Moore, and, like, Tanya loves Kenya, and so, it's so funny, because, like, who, who Tanya loves and who I love are completely different. Like, we, like, like, our favorites are not the same in the Housewives at all. At all. And so, I can remember, like, back in the day, I would say things to Tanya, like, and Alex, too, because Alex used to, like, defend Kenya. He's, kind of, he's rather indifferent to her today. But I would say, like, they they call, like, Marlo and these other people out, and like, Nene back in the day for being so mean and so ruthless. But then, like, Kenya can turn around and she can say and do the same things, but she takes no accountability whatsoever, right? But they're constantly calling out, like, um, like, they'll, you know, Marlo will say, say something. Well, I mean, she's not on the cast anymore, but she would say something. And then Kenya would be like, well, at least I don't have an arrest record. But then Marlo would bring up something from Kenya's past. And Kenya would be like, how low are you to go 10 years ago of something that happened 10 years ago? But their, their go-to always was calling Marlo a prostitute or saying that Marlo had an arrest record 30 years ago or something like that. They always went to that. Candy even went to that sometimes. And I'm a huge Candy fan, you know? But, like, Drew Sedora did it last season. The only one that really never engaged in that, and this is why I don't think she got her peach again, was that Sonia. And I liked Sonia. I thought she was real nice, but she was not interesting at all for the show. I mean, if I had to hear one more housewife line about something to do with the Olympics, I mean, she was boring on the show. She was boring. I think... I think she would make for good reality TV. I actually think, like, if she did a whole reality show, just her family, um, like, her family moving here from Jamaica, and then her winning the Olympics and things like that, I think that would be an interesting reality show. The thing is, she's not that well-known, you know? I mean, she is, like, in the sports world and stuff like that, but outside of that, she's not that well-known. I mean... I mean, even Sylvester Stallone is having a hard time with that, like, family stone situation. I don't know that or Family Stallone, or whatever it's called. I don't know that um, it would pull off great ratings. But I think she's too nice for the Housewives. Like, you have to be a little bit, like, cutthroat, and a little bit, you have to fight a little bit on the Housewives. And I think that's really why that Sonya, they didn't bring Sonya back. I don't think she really cared, in all honesty. I think she was kind of done with the show anyway. Um, so, yeah, so, that's interesting. 
Anyway, so last night I watched Sister Wives, one episode, and then I went in and I watched episode two and episode three of The Worst Roommate Ever. This, the first one is about a woman who has a son. I think he has autism. Is this my husband? No. Um, people always laugh about, like, <laughs> I've seen comments where people on my videos where people are like, Peter always knows the sound of Alex's car. It's because he has a Jeep, and so his car's real heavy. I can tell, like, the difference. Plus, I sit out here enough that, like, I can tell you what her car sounds like, my neighbor next door, because she's, like, an older car, and then my neighbor across the street, I can tell their cars differently. So I can't see, like, out the corner here. Like, it cuts off right at the end of their driveway. So I can't see cars that are coming from that way. And so when I hear it, it's kind of a game that I've played with myself is, like, guessing what the car is and whatever. I, I know the postman's car. Or the, the van and all that kind of stuff. So, but anyway, and um, the cor them on the, the them on the corner. My neighbors in the corner. I don't know their car sounds, but next door she has a VW um, Bug. So what the, do we still call them that? I don't know. So she has one, and I know the sound of that. Um, and her husband has like a SUV minivan kind of thing. I don't really know the, the sound of that, but everybody else is like, kind of know the sound of, <laughs> isn't that so crazy? But anyway, um, but Alex's car is like real heavy. I mean, you can, I can hear, there's actually another Jeep Wrangler just like his in the neighborhood and they sound identical. Um, if you've ever like had a Jeep or whatever, you can hear them like they, they, they're really heavy on the road. So, um, but anyway, so, the, okay, the first one's about this woman, and she has this roommate that's been friends of hers, like, for 20 years, and it's, like, all this evil stuff that she does to her. I don't want to give it away, because it's, if you like true crime, I'm going to tell you, like, I never thought it was, like, really, it, it's, like, true crime. It's, like, watching a true crime documentary. The second one, oh, the second one is about this woman that lives, like, outside of Palm Springs in Cathedral, California. And she's older, and she rents out rooms in her house because she needs to make money because she loses her job. And she works at Walgreens, and this, like, she has this run roommate, and then this gay guy moves in with her who she becomes really close with. And then, like, he has a history of this, of being, like, a really problematic, like, roommate. I mean, but each of these have, like, a murder involved in them. I don't remember that from season one. Um, and then the episode, the third episode is about this guy that was in the military, and it's really about his best friend, because he dies, like, that's how it starts, is that he dies on Father's Day, and then it's his best friend in the military moves in with his wife and son, and becomes, like, a big brother to his son, and it's, like, what she does, and it's, like, I mean, all, all three stories are, like, it, they, you know what they remind me of a little bit? If you watch a documentary, I can't remember what it was called, but it was about the woman and her, I think they were fiancés at the time, and they're married now, um, it was on Netflix. It was like three episodes or four episodes. There was a, a female police officer that was like really instrumental in like solving the crime. At the very end. It happened in California. And they were like, people came in and blindfolded them and had the things around their head and stuff. And then like took her and kidnapped her and she was gone for like four days. And they thought the, the fiance or the boyfriend did it. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? That's what these remind me of. Like, really thought through crimes. I mean, it's like, really, I mean, like, they're really thinking this stuff through when they're doing it. So I watched those last night, and then, um, I may have watched another episode of Sister Wise. I can't remember. I went to bed way too late. And then I couldn't fall asleep when I went to bed last night, and I knew we had to get up today. I want to take a shower and get ready, and, you know, Alex had taken care of Boo Rally and stuff like that. When I got up, he was in the shower. So I got up real quick because we had to go to lunch today for my mother-in-law's um, birthday. They, had, they got cake for both of us, which was really fun. Actually, Liliana just put this video up of... Oh, Alex just texted me and said he's on his way home. So Liliana posted this. Here, I'll show you. Where is it at? They got it. So we went to Verde, which is this Mexican restaurant. Alex afterwards, he brought me home, and then he met his mom at the phone store because she had to fix her phone, and she asked Alex to help her with it. So he went up the street to the mall, to the fashion mall, to help her with her phone, and now he's on his way home. Um, so it was me and Alex, his mom, and then Carlos, Liliana, and the kids, Alex's aunt and uncle, his cousin, his grandma, 
and um, his uncle's wife. And so it was all of us. And it was this big table. And we went to Verde, which is right up the street. It's a Mexican restaurant. I was so not hungry. Um, I was still, like, full from yesterday. And so... I got street corn and three mushroom empanadas, and I ate like half a mushroom empanada, and I was like, oh, my stomach is hurting, I can't eat this. So Alex's mom took those home. I ate the street corn, most of it. It was like, it was kind of like a big side of street corn, and I ate like like two thirds of it. Um, it was really, really good. I wouldn't say it's the best street corn that I've ever had. I love that Verde restaurant, but every time I go there, I get something the camera stopped. You guys will remember this. I don't know if I said the restaurant, but one time I went to go get a burrito and I asked them for a vegetarian burrito. I was like, I don't like, you know, whatever. And they put like, if you're a vegetarian and you've ever asked for this, you'll know what I'm talking about. Okay. I was so hungry for a burrito and I just wanted like cheese and beans in it, like in some rice. I did. That was all I wanted in the burrito. And so I was like explaining it to the server and I was like, I'm a vegetarian. Like, oh, we can make you a vegetarian burrito. We'll put like vegetables. I was like, I don't want all that. I was like, I just want cheese and beans and rice, like just a very plain burrito. No, 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 no. We can make this vegetarian burrito. You'll love it. Trust me. And so finally I was like, Alex is like, it might be really good. Try it. And I was like, okay. So they made me this burrito. It literally had like pieces of broccoli and like whole tomatoes in it. It was so gross. It was like, I, I couldn't even <laughs> eat this burrito. That was a long time ago. But that was the only miss I've ever had. We actually went there for Melissa's birthday last month too. That We went to the same restaurant. Everybody that I know loves this restaurant. Um, Verde, V-E-R-D-E. -E. There's a couple of them in Indianapolis. Anyway, they're really, really nice. And um, they're really fun. So we went there. We were there for about two hours. And then after that, um, took a big family picture and everything. And then Alex brought me home and I was hanging out with Boo Radley for a little bit and making the bed. And then I was like, I'm going to vlog while Alex is gone. And then when he comes home, I'm going to relax. I think I'm going to take a nap or something. Um, I mean, it's still early enough. 5.01. I think I'm going to take a nap. Um, there's kind of a breeze. I don't... I was thinking about going to the pool, but I think I'm going to start that. I'm so excited. This is going to sound so corny, but I'm so excited about July starting because I'm going to start my, like, my daily journal where I, like, just write, like, stuff that happened throughout the day. I'm excited about that, number one. Um, somebody commented and said I should do that with the happiness journal, which I thought was kind of a good idea that, like, each day, like, in there I just, like, write things that make me happy. I might use that one journal for all of that, but then I put all those other journals and I'm like, I don't know. So we'll see. Well, I'm going to start it tomorrow. Um, and then tomorrow I'm also getting back into the walking again. I might walk tonight. We'll see how I feel. Um, I, I haven't picked a book yet, so I've got to pick a book. Um, a new book to start. So I might start that tonight and go for a walk, but tomorrow definitely I'm going for a walk. Caroline and I are doing, she can't do Cousin Fun Day on Wednesday this week. <laughs> okay, this was the funniest conversation. So before we left for Mexico, Caroline couldn't go because, I don't know if I said this or not on the trip, but... She committed to a girl's trip. Her friend moved to Charlevoix. And so she went up there for like a week. So that's why she couldn't go. She really wanted to go on this trip with us to Mexico. Um, but before we left, like Caroline's so structured that she's like, okay, the Wednesday after you get back, which is the third, right? She's like, can you do the third? And I was like, yeah, I can do the third. She's like, okay, I'm putting you down here. I'm putting you down from like 12 to 3 on the third. We'll run around and go get brunch and stuff like that. And if you don't have a lot to do, then we can go to the pool. Because Caroline's like, we need to go to the pool as much as possible. It's July. We haven't been in the pool once. Well, she and I haven't together. I was like, okay, that'll be fine. I don't have a lot to do this week. I just want to go by the post office, go to the grocery store. I'm cool, right? And then we can... My neighbor's garage door is going up. <laughs> I should be the detective of the neighborhood. Um, and so, Caroline was texting me yesterday. She called and left me a message about my birthday. See, there was my neighbor. She just left. I, I knew it was her. And um, and so I called her because she sang me happy birthday. You want to know what Caroline said to me yesterday? Here, I'll tell you what Caroline said to me. <laughs> I'll read you the voice message. Oh, did I delete it? I deleted it. How do you get to deleted voicemails? Deleted messages. Caroline does, Caroline. Okay. Happy birthday to you from your best cousin, Caroline, ever. Best uh, cousin ever in the entire world. Or whole world. Hope you have an awesome day. Love you. I can't do Wednesday next week. I can do Tuesday. <laughs> She said, and it's your birthday. I don't know. Uh, she said something about me being 52. She said, old. You're just old. <laughs> oh, by the way, I can't do Wednesday. I hope you remember that because you're old. <laughs> so she's like, so I can do Tuesday. 
I can't do Monday. I can probably do Friday, but I don't think you like to do Fridays because Alex usually works from home. Text me or call me about the switch in the day. Bye. And then Alex's mom, she sang me happy birthday. Wasn't that sweet? Um, so that was my messages from yesterday. But anyway, so we're not doing uh, Cousin Fun Day on Wednesday this week. But it's so funny because I said to her, I can do Tuesday, but we have marriage counseling on Tuesday. And so Tanya had asked me yesterday, her granddaughters are leaving this week. And I tomorrow or Tuesday, I can't remember what day. And so she's like, do you want to go to a meeting on Tuesday night together? And then we can like hang out and whatever. I was like, yeah, that would be great. And I was like, I have marriage counseling on Tuesday because one of the reasons like I think our therapist isn't doing Mondays anymore, so he's been asking us if we can do Tuesdays, which is totally fine. And I said, when he like asked us to switch, I was like, that's perfect, because right when we get done, then Alex can drop me off on the way home at Tanya's, and then if Tanya and I want to go to a meeting, if that week, like it works for her, that we can do it. So I told Tanya, I was like, if something comes up, just let me know, and then I'll just come home after therapy. But if not, then we can go to a meeting on Tuesday. So I, that's a lot for me, because I have to like start getting ready at like four o'clock to get the Uber at five and all kinds of stuff. So I have to have all my videos filmed, including my vlog, before like four o'clock, right? And so I told Caroline, I said, I can, but it has to be earlier. And she was like, oh, what? And I said, I said, because I was explaining it to her, right? And she was like, and I said, I appreciate you coming. I was like, we can skip this week if you want to skip this week. And she's like, no. And she's like, so you can't go to the pool on Tuesday. And I was like, well, I can only be gone. She was like, well, I'm going to schedule you in from 11 to 2. And I was like, okay, that's fine. I don't need to be gone that long. She's like, well, maybe we can go to the pool afterwards. And I was like, well, I can't do the pool on Tuesday because I want to film some videos because I've been taking a couple days off and, you know, whatever. And then i got to get ready for therapy and stuff like that. She goes, so I thought we said that we were going to start going to the pool on Tuesday. Or we were going to start going to the pool in the summer in July. That's what she said. And I said... Yes, Caroline, I can. I can do the pool on Wednesday, like we scheduled. Remember before I left that you were adamant that we put this in the calendar? I said, I can totally do the pool all day Wednesday. In fact, I don't even need to go anywhere on Wednesday. I can DoorDash groceries or I can Instacart them. I said, I don't need to go anywhere. Alex can take me to the post office this weekend. I said, I she's laughing on the phone. I said, I can do Wednesday. I can stay. I, I said, I can do Wednesday all day at the pool if you want to. I said, like we scheduled. I said, because you have to have a rigid schedule. And she's laughing on the phone. She's like, she's like, oh my God, blah, 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 you're trying to come for me. I said, girl, I'm not trying to come for you, but you're the one that has to have the rigid schedule. And I said, I appreciate you coming to pick, pick me up once a week. I said, but I don't want you to have to spend your one day. And she's like, well, I wanted to go to the pool. I said, okay, well then we'll run to the grocery store, the post office, and we'll come home. And if it's nice on Tuesday, I don't think it's supposed to be nice on Tuesday. I said, here's Alex coming home. I can hear him putting up the garage door. I said, um, I said, uh, Good hearing, which is so funny because out of this ear, I think it's this ear, I'm like not that great at hearing. And I always have to sit like so I can hear the rest of the, the place. But anyway, um, so I said, and then we'll come back and if it's nice, we'll go to the pool for an hour or two. And she goes, well, I have something that afternoon. So I don't want to be like have my hair wet. I'm like, girl, <laughs> decide, okay? I don't care. We can go to the pool. We can go put our feet in the pool. We can do whatever you want to do. She's like, well, I just, I have something that, I, I go, oh, a dinner appointment? This is what she calls her dinner dates now. This is where people, like, will be like, he's being so mean to Caroline. No, this is the language of Caroline. This is our love language. We joke with each other. Caroline can handle it, and I can handle it from Caroline. So, anyway, um, she calls her, her, so she goes out to dinner, like, four nights a week with her girlfriends. Um, and so... She loves going out. To, I was telling my friends this or on our trip. I was like, because they, they said oh, Caroline was supposed to come. And I was like, she couldn't because of a girl's trip. And I said, my cousin, like, if she could retire tomorrow and just go on a constant girl's trip, she loves going. And they are like, doesn't she love to spend time with her husband? I was like, oh, yeah, she loves her husband. But her husband doesn't really like to leave. He likes to just stay at home and cook out and be at home and watch sports and stuff like that. And he just wants her to be happy. So he loves that she goes out and is happy. And then... She comes home and they watch a TV show together and then they go to bed and whatever. I said, my cousin would go on a girl's trip. Like, she'd be on a constant girl's trip. She loves hanging out with her girlfriends. <laughs> like, she loves it, you know? Um, it's so weird, too, because, like, I feel like women in our society can go out to, like, lunches and dinners with their girlfriends, but God forbid my husband go out two to three nights a week. Well, he doesn't even do three nights a week anymore. Two nights a week and people are like, Alex is always gone. He never spends any time with, that, with, his, with Peter at home. <laughs> 
I think people sometimes don't realize that maybe I like my time alone, and I'm very happy when Alex goes out because I get to spend that my time alone in the house. I get to have my my night alone. But it is funny to me, you know. I have so many girlfriends of mine that I'll be like, "What are you doing tonight? Are you guys like, are you staying at home like having a family dinner?" And they're like. No, we did that on Sunday and Monday. I'm going out to dinner with my girlfriends tomorrow night. Oh, okay. What are you doing tomorrow night? Oh, I'm going to a meeting, and then I'm my girlfriends and I were going out to get dinner afterwards. <laughs> they do that like two or three nights a week. Nobody says anything like their marriage is falling apart. But God forbid if my husband goes out to dinner two nights a week with girlfriends, we're headed for divorce, you know? I think it's so interesting. So anyway, um, so yeah, so we went to brunch today, and they all, like, most of them had, like, um, like these big plates of like seafood and stuff like that. Alex had, um, why can I never remember what it's called? Fajitas. Alex and had fajitas. Carlitos had tacos, his, cause his dad had tacos. And Sebastian had a cheeseburger and french fries. Liliana had the big seafood plate. Carlos had, um, the tacos and that's why Carlitos got the tacos. And then like... Alex's uncle's wife, his grandma, his cousin, Alex's aunt and uncle, and his mom all got this. It was like this big seafood platter thing. So, anyway, but I'm very excited about July. <clears throat> Tomorrow, I am going to be calling um, a friend of ours that's a personal trainer and is actually like has his own gym and stuff like that. It's too far for me to go to. I mean, I could. I probably will, but I also, like, I know he's somebody, because, like, he has said any time that I need help, like, just to reach out to him. So I want to reach out to him tomorrow to see if he can come over here sometime in the next week or two or a couple weeks to put together, like, a workout routine from home. Um, and, you know, like, I've been doing what I thought was working, and it's not working. I said this on my Peter Does Stuff channel, so it's like, I need to step it up. And so many people have suggested this stuff to me, and I'm like, okay, I just need to do it. So I'm going to do that. There she is back home again. What are you doing back home again, girl? There's my neighbor. <laughs> So, um, and then Alex has a friend that is a, oh, she's backing up. What are you backing up for? Were you saying something to me? Oh, I was saying, what, where did you go? You just ran out for two seconds. I heard your garage door go up. Yeah, uh, I'm about to get ready for a dinner tonight. A dinner? Yeah. A dinner date? No. <laughs> Can I tell them why, why we're doing laps in the, I'm recording right now. Can I tell them why we're doing... Laps in the pool? Yeah. She has a date. <laughs> yeah. In August. In August. He's sexy, you said? I have to get sexy. Oh, she has to get sexy. She's got a date in August, which is why we have to tread water. Other neighbors are coming out right now. I can't be telling your story. Well, have fun tonight. Okay, bye. I guess we're not going to the pool. Anyway, um... She's got a day in August. So the first night that we went up there, she was like, did I ever say this on here? I don't think I, I did. Cause I was like, I wanted to like joke about it and I wanted to ask her first if I could. So, um, she's always like, I get done vlogging. She like walks over here. She's like, I want to be on your vlog. I was like, well, the vlog's not really like, like two people. If you want to do like, she's been in some reviews with me in the past and stuff like that. I love her so much. But anyway, she, um, she's got a day in August with somebody that's like out of the country and is like moving, like is from here, like has lived out of the country for a couple of years and is moving back. And so they were talking and, and th this guy was like, we should go on a date when I come back. <laughs> and she's like, he's totally a cat. She's totally my type and everything like that. She's like, I gotta get sexy by August. I go, oh, cause she goes to the gym like every day. And I was like, August. <laughs> and I was like, girl, you got two and a half months. She's like, I gotta do like, she like times herself, like how many laps she does and try. I love it, right? So that's who I've been swimming laps with. We just like swim laps. We do side stroke. And she's like, no, I'm like, the side stroke's a waste of time. She's like, the side stroke's not a waste of time. You get your legs. And she's like, you get your glutes and all this kind of stuff. And so anyway, she's so fun, but she keeps me like, uh, getting serious about the workout and all that kind of stuff. Here's my neighbor on the corner leaving. Is it both of them or is it just him? I don't see her on the car. Anyway, um, so I'm excited about that. And also, Alex and I have a friend that is a nutritionist and dietitian. And she, it's her friend that we travel with a lot, um, th that we go on places with she and her husband. And so I'm going to reach out to her to see if that's something that she can help me with. When I talked to her about it originally, because Alex was like, you need to talk to her, blah, 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 whatever. She was like, I need to get all your blood work from your doctor if you want me to help you. She was like, but I would really prefer, she was like, because she doesn't do this. She does it for like, um, 
like, uh, what do you call it? I'm um, assisted living program. She does like all the, like the dietitian stuff like that. She doesn't really have like private clients. And so she was like, I have a friend of mine that actually does do private clients, um, that has her masters in this and whatever. And she would be great for you to talk to. So I'm going to call her and see if she wants to help me, she can help me. If she doesn't, then she's going to connect me. But she was like, you got to get all like, have, give access to whoever works with you for your doctor, your blood work and all that kind of stuff, because that has a lot to do with what you can eat, what you can't eat. Some people can eat this and like, you know, whatever. So she's like, but we'll figure it all out for you and then you can like, you know, make better. So that's July is coming too. And then the walking is going to be like, I'm picking back up. I walked like every day for like seven or eight days before we left on vacation. And all in all honesty, I really didn't walk a lot on vacation. I thought I would like every day. Alex and I took a walk way down on the beach one day. Um, I think it was like the last day. I mean, I walked around the resort and stuff like that, so I definitely had more steps. There's my favorite, uh, I call him my favorite neighbor because they always are so nice to me when they walk by. I actually saw them earlier today, but now he's riding his bike. Um, she's like, this is perfect weather. If this could be the weather all year round. Um, it is beautiful today. Look, it's like, I mean, this is Indiana summer, right? So it was thunderstorming last night, and now look. It's focusing. Hold on. Let's see if we can get, it's like bright blue. There's literally not a, a cloud in the sky. So pretty, isn't it? So that's July. I feel like the personal trainer thing is going to be easier than the dietitian thing, but I'm not getting stressed out about either one of them. I actually really am excited about it. <clears throat> um, but the personal trainer thing, I know people are going to be like, well, you could take an Uber to the gym and blah, 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 whatever. I could, um, but I know a lot of people that have home gyms and work out from home and walk and run. And so I really want to incorporate that. I really want to walk to run. Although I enjoy my walk so much that what I'm thinking about doing is maybe like getting up and when I get up, like if I get to the point where I can run again, run in the morning and then walk at night just for like exercise, but also enjoyment. That would be my goal. That would be, I mean, I'm not there yet, but that would be my goal. Let's say by sometime this fall is to like run several times a week and when I get up and then walk at night just for like enjoyment and I mean exercise too but like to listen to my audiobooks because I don't like to, to run I like to listen to music when I run I mean I haven't ran in years but when I did run and I did do like fast cardio I like to listen to music I mean today when I listen to music is when I walk faster I walk pretty fast anyway so anyway but I want to have him come over here I know all I have to do is call and he'll be like Peter I've been waiting for you to, to call me and like put some, I mean, I have free weights. If he tells me to get different free weights or whatever, or do whatever kind of exercises or one of those balls, I don't know what he'll tell me. So anyway, I'm going to call him and see if what, um, like he'll charge to come over here and whatever and just set that up and see if he'll come over here and do that. Um, but he has personal clients too. So I know that like, that's something that is like, in, like that's something that he does. So that's July. And also I have so many books I'm excited about reading. We have the return to the true crime book club that will be at the end of July sometime that will be over May and June's books. And then, yeah. And so I'm just excited to relax and whatever our anniversary is in August. We have nothing planned yet for it. Um, Last year, we were going to go to Vegas. And remember, I kept on looking. It was, like, so, so expensive. And I said to Alex when we were on this trip, because we usually try to plan our next trip when we're on vacation. And so I was like, you know, we need to really be thinking about... Um, Alex has, like, a conference in Denver in the next couple weeks. Um, but he's not sure if it's going to happen or not yet. And if he goes, I'm going to go with him and visit Susie for, like, a day or two. And then we're going to visit Demi and Frankie and, like for a day or two. They said we could stay with them, but we'll get a hotel room. And um, and so it's like four days that we would be out there. So that would be fun. Um, yeah. It was so funny because I posted this thing. It's this thing that I follow that's like Indiana gay history or whatever. I don't remember what it's called, but they posted this thing about the two like drag bars that were open for years and it was tomorrow's and the 10 the 10 was a lesbian bar they used to call it the, the dirty dime and um both of them are closed down tomorrow's closed down probably 25 years ago <laughs> god maybe i think it might have closed down before i got sober tomorrow's was on meridian downtown it was right next to where if you if you live in indianapolis and you know downtown on meridian where the wendy's is it's like 20th and meridian no 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 it would be like more north than that it'd be like 28th and meridian the wendy's if you're going south, it's on the left-hand side. It was right next to it. It's now a bank. That used to be Tomorrow's. It was a drag bar. That was the very first gay bar that I ever went to in my entire life was Tomorrow's. And um, 
and then the 10 was a lesbian bar and it was between nine it was between 10th it was on 10th between 9th and 10th street that's why it was called the 10 but also because 10 percent of society is supposed to be gay which i think that statistic is probably very very low but that's what it always was back in the day it was like they would say 10 percent so the 10 was between 9th and 10th street and between pennsylvania and meridian and, oh my god, it was so much fun. And so they were posting these pictures of, like, these drag queens from back in the day that, like, I used to go, like, Gina Jones and Jamie Hunter and stuff. And so, like, I shared it on my Instagram. And I put something on there, like, these are the first bars that I ever went to. And my friend that I met, like, at, the, at Tomorrow's, he was, like, one of my very first, like, gay friends. I haven't seen him. He lives in Nashville. I haven't seen him in Nashville, Tennessee with his husband. I haven't seen him in years. I think the last time I saw him... Alex and I have been together like a year or two. Oh, no, 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 that's not true. Alex and I have been together a year or two, and I saw him at Pride Day. He happened to just be in town for Pride Day, and he stopped there for like a half an hour. And I saw him like as we were leaving, he was coming in. But then I saw him probably an, a year after that. We were, all of us, he was with a friend of ours that since passed away that was a photographer. Um, and he, they were at um, The Connection in Louisville, which no longer exists, and I saw him there. Um, but we've kind of like kept up through the years and stuff like that and it's so funny because I always had a crush on this guy when I was like younger and he um, and we just ended up becoming really really good friends he's such a nice guy and he and his husband have been together like as long as Alex and I have been together if not longer and I think they've been together like actually I think they have been together like two or three years long longer than Alex I think they just celebrated like 19 years together or something like that but anyway um, it was funny because years ago, like, I said something to him about, like, I always had a crush on you. He had a boyfriend for a long, long, long time. And I met his boyfriend at the same time, too, who was best friends with one of my girlfriends. And so, I think that's actually how I met him, was through his boyfriend. But I remember, like, I can remember, like, when I met him. So, anyway, but he messaged me last night, and he, like, when I put the picture up, and he was, like, so fun. And I was like, I met you at Tomorrow's. Like, that's where I first met you. And he was like, what did he say? It was so funny, because he said something like... I'm, Oh, he said, uh, he goes, I remember, I'm sure of it. And um, I told him years ago, I was like, I had such a crush on you um, back in the day when we first met, like, for, like, years. We just were just, and we were too good of friends that, like, never would have worked anyway. And But he was like, why didn't you ever hit on me or anything? And I was like, I just, we were too good of friends. Like, I just, I never was somebody that would, like, cross those boundaries, even with, like, friends of mine that I thought were, like, really good looking and whatever. And then later I found out that, like, so many of my friends, like, they knew that about me, right? Like, they knew that I would, like, I was always that, like, if you're my friend, you're my friend. Like, we're not crossing, like, that line. I did that, like, once with, like, one friend of mine. Like, we were really, really good friends, and then we ended up, like, sleeping together. And um, he's passed away, so I can <laughs> share this story. He wouldn't care anyway. He'd be laughing right now anyway. It was disastrous. It just did not work. Um, and so, and I didn't really, I know I've done it. I've done that twice. <laughs> It was disastrous both times. <laughs> but I really, like, you know when they have, like, you see in these movies and it's like best friends fall in love and they become, like, that's never really happened to me. So all my friends knew that, like, I didn't sleep with my friends. That was, like, something that I didn't do. Like, if you were my friend, you were my friend. I didn't sleep with you, right? Well, all my friends were all the good-looking guys back in the day. <laughs> And I was always also wanting to always be, like, in some monogamous long-term relationship. I was looking for love, right? So later I found out, I was talking to one of my friends, and I said something about, I can't even remember what I said. And he said something about, like, oh, I hooked up with him. And I was like, what? And he was like, I hooked up with him, like, when we were, like, 22. And I was like, this is a friend of mine that's, like, older than me. I was like, oh. And then he said something about... I said something about somebody else. I was like, I always kind of like want, thought he was cute. I always kind of wanted to hook up with him. He's like, oh, I hooked up with him too. I was like, what? He was like, Peter, we were all hooking up with everybody back in the day. You're the only one that wasn't. And he was like, you were either so drunk that nobody wanted to, or you just would never sleep with your friends. I was like, God, I missed out on so much fun back in the day. Or maybe I didn't. I don't know. But it is sad when I look back, you know, on my my life and I've had so many friends of mine that have like I you know who was I thinking about this with the other day I was thinking about it not the same story but similar that when I got sober like one of the things that was hard for me was that so many people that were really close to me like I would say good acquaintances not good friends but good acquaintances that I knew from going out and whatever like everybody knew that I went to treatment like when I went to treatment I mean it was like a known thing 
it was really hard, like, after I got sober that, like, really nobody else got sober around that time. One of my girlfriends, she got sober in a different program, like, two years later. And I'm still sober today. Um, and we have, like, a lot of friends in common and sobriety and stuff like that. And But it's, like, I mean, I literally, within, like, three to five years after I got sober, I probably had I don't know, five, ten maybe more friends that passed away from overdoses and drug-related deaths. I mean, it's really sad, you know? Um, I mean, friends that I knew from going out, not friends that I knew from sobriety. These were friends that I knew from, like, specifically going out and using with and stuff like that. And I can remember it was really hard for me because I was like... I wish people had learned from what I went through. Like, I wish I could have been... Like, they could have learned from what I my lesson, you know, like, I, I wish they would have got it, and they didn't, and that was hard, I remember at first, but anyway, so yeah, I vlogged for a lot longer than I thought I was going to vlog for, I vlogged for, uh, 55 minutes, <laughs> and I know Tia's going to kill me, but I'm going to get off here before an hour, so, uh, and I have vlogged, you guys, I cannot believe it, with today, I have vlogged for three months in a row, I cannot believe it, and, um, consistently three months in a row. I don't plan on taking tomorrow off, so I'm just going to keep on going for as long as I possibly can. And it's so funny when I say that, because, like, my first, like, until PP passed away, I don't think I took a day off at all. And so when did I, that would have been three or four years, I think, that I didn't take a day off vlogging until PP passed away. And that was when I first took some time off, was when we went to Mexico after PP passed away. Um, so it's weird now that I'm like, but there was a period, you know, earlier in this year where I was, like, taking a day off and a, here and there when I, you know, felt like I needed to or I was too tired or whatever. And you guys were so supportive of that. I, I really appreciate it. Um, I love this channel so much. This is literally my heartstone, you know? And I think one of the things I'm really thinking about right now is that I'm really trying to think about, like, what I want to do on YouTube moving forward. And, like, I'm trying to figure out, like, what do I want to do with my drama channel, you know? I mean, I don't plan to go anywhere. The, real the reality is, I don't think really anybody cares that deeply anymore. Although, some drama channels still get really great views. Um, I don't know that I want to be talking about it when I'm 60. So, i got to figure out what to do with that channel. I can vlog on here until I'm 85. You know what I mean? Or 90. <laughs> I mean, it's just a guy sitting in a chair talking, you know what I mean? So, I mean, I don't plan on giving any of my channels up, but I will say that moving forward, like, I really want to focus a lot of attention on my TV watching channel because I love watching TV shows and I love watching TV series and it just is something that's so natural for me that I love doing. Um, I love doing the drama too. I love having an opinion. It just, people don't seem to care that much anymore. So, I want to do something over there that people seem to be more interested in it because I want to entertain people and get people's minds off things. So, if anybody has any suggestions, I would love to hear it about my drama channel. I think me announcing that I was going to make some changes kind of confused some people and whatever. Um, so I don't know, really. Like, I'm going to keep on doing what I'm doing right now on my drama channel, but in the next year or two, I might, like, change up some... I keep on thinking I want to do, like, true crime over there, and then it doesn't feel right, and then I get I get nervous doing those videos because it's a lot of research, and if I get something wrong, I don't want to get it wrong. So I get kind of nervous about that. The videos that I, like, you know, really... Well, I love to do all the videos over there. They're so fun for me. I, actually, like, the video I did yesterday, which was just a BS video, which was just talking about, like, drama and flipping a fan and whatever, was so fun for me, but, like... Um, this is probably going to go on over an hour and Tia's going to get away. See, Tia, you're going to get your way. The battery's at the halfway mark, so I don't know when it's going to start dying. But um, the video that I did, it wasn't yesterday, it was the day before, where I just flipped a fan, I, I went through some receipts and shared some stuff, whatever. Like, those are the videos that are, like, the most fun for me, that are just kind of like, you know, I don't really, they're not, like, deep thought videos and whatever. I do love having the deep discussion videos, but they're so polarizing because people take such a stance one way or another with influencers or any topic that you talk about, right? Which is, I mean, obviously we all have opinions about things, and so opinions are going to be polarizing. Um, I mean, I even find that on the Peter Watches TV channel that opinions are polarizing and things like that, and that's fine. Um, but I'm having so much fun over on that channel that I really want to, like, focus a lot of attention and try to film on a regular basis over there. My Peter Does Stuff channel, I love doing. I mean, I love all my channels for different reasons. I, right now, have, like, 10 or 15 videos I want to film on my, my 
uh, booktube channel. So this month is also like my return to booktube a little bit. Like, I mean, I I filmed more than I did at the first part of the year, well, like the first three months of the year I've been filming more, but I want to film more and more consistently over there. So I want to do, I have to do the video review of the Thursday Murder Club. I also want to do a review of the Steve Cavanaugh book. I have an Audible haul that I want to do. I have a collection of books that I want to show. And then I have a series that I want to start over there, which is just so random. It's like where I pick a book that means something to me and I show it and explain the story behind why that book means something to me that has actually nothing to do with the book, if that makes sense. I thought that would be kind of a fun series over there. So yeah, so July is going to be a month for me of like going to the pool, coming up with video ideas, reading, well, listening to a lot of audiobooks, but reading too. Ellen Hopkins has a new book coming out. I think it's called... I screenshot it. I really want to read it. Why do I want to say it's called Fury? Does anybody know what it's called? I think I'm going to pre-order it. I've been meaning the camera stopped when I was looking for this receipt. I knew that it would. Um, what is the name of this? This. Hold on a second. I was sending this to somebody to show them. This is the David Yerman bracelet that Alex got me. Um, oh, pictures of Boo Radley sleeping in his bed. He's so sweet. Oh, Big Marv. Where is this? Ellen Hopkins' book. Come on now, I know I screenshot it. Bracelets I want to order, the shirt I want to order. Where's the battery? I don't want to start. Oh, it's called Sink. Some people are born marked by fate, time stamped by destinies beyond their control. Sank by Ellen Hopkins. I don't know when it comes out though, it doesn't say. So I think I'm gonna pre-order that. I actually, the, the, did I call her Linda Hopkins? Ellen Hopkins. I read like three of her books. Like Crank, Glass, and whatever about the meth addict. I think I'm gonna go back and reread those books. If you've never read the Ellen Hopkins books, they're so raw, they're so vulnerable, they're fantastically done. When you open them, they look like poems, but they don't rhyme or anything. They're just, they're like done, like they're printed like prose stanzas, but they don't read that way at all. They're, they're not like written like poetry and they're really quick reads. The books are like that thick and they're such great reads. I'm thinking about going back. The ones that are called like, the ones about the runaways, they end up in Vegas. I read that series. I don't want to go back and read that series. The, the books are like, they're really hard to read because they're really very, very real. I mean, like I would trigger, trigger warning all of her books for anybody because her books deal with like mental health and eating disorders, addiction, abuse, um, being like the idea of being perfect. I think she has one called perfect. I haven't read that one yet. It's about two twins, I think. Um, and like one is like has this drive for per perfection and the other one doesn't or something like that. Maybe that's not the same book, but she has one called perfect. I have that one. I have like most of her books, but I want to go in and buy this book and there's rumble, which is about somebody that gets into like a, like it's like, ga like street gangs. I think it's about like, like he's a fighter or something like that. Has always been kind of like a fighter fighting people. I haven't read that one yet. It's supposed to be really, really good. But she has a bunch that are great. And um, I know so many people that love them. And she writes so authentically and so vulnerably and so raw. If you've never read an Ellen Hopkins book, I would highly recommend it. They're such quick, quick reads. If you went to go pick it out of the bookstore, you would think this is going to take me four years to read because it's so thick. But like you could literally read 100 pages in like a half an hour because it just like you, it stands up, stands up, stands up, stands up. It's really quick reads like that. And it's really enjoyable. The dialogue is fantastic. Um, they're just really good reads. I think I'm going to go back because it's been like now like probably, God, 20 years maybe. Since maybe, maybe not 20 years, maybe 15 years or something. Probably 20 years, actually, since I've read the first three. Glass. Cr if, I think Crank is the first one. Crank. There, it's all about, she based those books. This is how she got writing them. Her daughter was a crystal math addict. And so that's why she started writing about a crystal math addict that had kids and stuff like that. And so it's called Crank, Glass, and Heat is maybe the third one. I can't remember. But anyway, there's three of them in that series. I'm going to go back and probably read those. I have all those. Um... But I want to read some of her books. Those are really great, like, summer reads. I also want to read this summer. These are other books I need to get. So I have Treasure Island from On Golden Pond. I have that in... Well, it's not fun. The battery's dying. I'm going to go get another battery. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. Got my 
new battery. Here's my, oh, it's hot. Um, Alex is upstairs. He has the TV blaring and the fan on. I said, what are you watching up there? He goes, Love Island. He's like obsessed with Love Island, which I said I was going to watch. I said to him last night, I said, do you think I'd like Love Island? He was like, yeah. He was like, it reminds me a lot of X on the Beach. And he was like, and I think because of like Big Brother, you'd watch it. I got all these shows I got to watch. I was actually thinking about, because I really wanted to go to the casino for my birthday. So I was thinking about going to the casino. I didn't want to go over the weekend. Fridays and Saturdays were like, it's so packed and it's kind of amateur night. Amateur night by me, like not people that are serious gamblers so just there for fun. And so I was like, well, maybe I will go to, <laughs> I mean, where you like to sit at one machine for like hours on end. The thing is, the last time that I went, I got, I felt stuck. I hated that feeling. I hated it, right? Um, and so I'm like, I don't, Alex is like schedule an Uber, but I don't, unless I make the decision, I won't know if there's like an Uber available to bring me home at that time. So, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think I'm going to go tonight, but those birds are going at it. But then I don't know when I would go in the next week because 4th of July is on Thursday, which means Wednesday will be absolutely packed. The casino, Wednesday, the night before a holiday, is always packed. I want to film videos Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So, Tuesday, Caroline's coming at 11, which means I have to get up at like 9, which that is real early for me. So, I wouldn't go tomorrow night. Tuesday night, I'll probably be so tired after going to the meeting and doing all that kind of stuff that I won't want to go Tuesday. I'm hoping that I can film a vlog and stuff on Tuesday. Worst case scenario, after I get back from the meeting on Tuesday, if I haven't filmed anything yet, I'll just sit out here for like 15 minutes and film a fast vlog. And then this vlog is actually longer than I thought it would be. I thought I was going to just film like 20 minutes today as my last vlog of the month. I didn't realize I was going to talk this long. But anyway, um, on Tuesday, if I don't get time to, because I'm not going to stress myself out before therapy and going to this meeting and stuff, because I'm excited about therapy, I'm excited about this meeting and stuff, see Tanya. So, if I don't get the vlog done in time, then I will, when I get home, so I'll probably be home like 10 or 10.30, something like that. I'll just film like 20 minutes, you know, half an hour maybe, and then upload it on my phone and try to get it up that night. That'll be my plan. So, Yeah. Depending on what I make my drama videos about this week, maybe tomorrow night I'll film a drama video out here so I don't have to like worry about getting a drama video up on Tuesday. I'm not like, to be honest with you, this is where I'm at this summer. I'm like, I'm gonna enjoy my summer and I'm gonna get the videos up that I get up. And if I don't get videos up on my channels that I want to every single day, I'm not gonna stress out about it. Like, I always make a list every day. I, I still have to make my list. I started it for my list for tomorrow, but I'm gonna make it well, all that kind of stuff today, so. But anyway, what was the other thing I was talking about? Can I find it again? The battery died. Alex is watching Love Island. Big Brother starting in July. Oh yeah, everybody wants me to watch Love Island. And I asked him, I was like, do you think I'd watch it? He's like, I think you would. It reminds me of X on the Beach, but also kind of like Big Brother, but I don't watch Big Brother. So anyway, I told him, I said, okay, after I get done vlogging, I'm like, get it rendered and I'm, it starts to upload, I'm gonna lay down for a little bit. And he's like, okay. He's like, I don't care. I can actually fall asleep easier with like the TV blaring and the fan on and Boo Radley and Alex next to me. I can like fall asleep easier than that versus it being like dead silent in the morning. I don't know why, but I just, it's like very homey to me. It's like falling asleep on a couch while people are like, you know, in the kitchen, like, you know, on Thanksgiving or something like that. So yeah, as far as the casino, I don't know what day I would go if I don't go tonight. And to be honest with you, I have so many shows and like, I mean, back in the day, like, when Valerie, like, lived here and stuff, I mean, any day that she would have been like, do you want to go to the casino, I would have gone. Because it was so much fun just to, like, get away for a few hours and whatever. I don't, like, I, I think it still sounds like fun. I mean, I've been twice in the last year. I mean, that's, like, crazy to me. I mean, I used to go, I didn't go all the time, but I went, you know, at minimum once or twice a month. And so, I don't know, it's like, I still like the idea of like going, but I, the 
idea of getting stuck there and having to wait three hours for an Uber. And the thing is, I won't know that I can schedule it until, like, I decide that I'm going to go. So, I mean, I, I'm not going to schedule it and then cancel it because I decide not to go. I'm not going to do that to somebody that's going to, like, get up just to come pick me up and things like I mean, I'm just kind of, like, reading into this. But you know what I'm saying, right? So, I wouldn't schedule it. <clears throat> the other thing is with the casino, and if you like to go to the casino and just, like, hang out there, you'll get what I'm saying. Like... You might get there, go up there at like 9 or 10, and by like 1, be ready to go. Or you might want to stay till 4 or 5. You know, you never know. It kind of depends on if you're winning or not. If I'm winning, I'm not going to want to leave. If I'm losing, I'm going to want to go. So, you know, that I'm not going to want to wait two hours for an Uber that I scheduled if I'm ready to go at 1. Like, that's part of the problem. It's not really an issue because, honestly, like, the last time that I went, I had a good time, but, like, I also was, like, asking myself in my head, would you have had a better time sitting at home watching TV or listening to an audiobook? And the reality is I have probably more fun now listening to an audiobook or watching TV or making some coffee and lighting the candles inside than I do. I haven't lit the candles since we've been home. The last two nights I haven't done that um, inside. <clears throat> I probably have more fun doing that. And I have so many shows that I want to watch than I do going to the casino. You know, and part of the fun, too, is that it was so fun to go with Valerie. And, like, even she and I wouldn't always sit next to each other. But, like, you know, like, we'd sit where we could be an eye, you know, like, we could see each other. And I'd be like, are you winning? Or she'd text me and be like, do you have any bonuses? And then I'd get up and I'd go get some, you know, a pop or whatever. And I'd be like, you want to show I drink coffee? I'd be like, do you want a coffee or anything? She'd be like, yeah, give me a coffee. I'd get her a coffee and I'd stand over there and talk to her for a little bit. Or she'd come over to my machine and talk to me for a little bit. So it was fun. It was social. It does it, to go up there by myself doesn't feel like that. And I, I mean, it's not like I had never gone to by myself, because I had. Um, but when you go, like, even just once or twice a month, you meet other people there that you see. Um, I will say this. Every time I talk about the casino, there's somebody that says, I used to sit next to you at the casino and um, play next to you, and I would love to come pick you up and take you to the casino. And the last time that they commented on my video, like, there were, like, four or five people that were like, oh, I wish Peter would go to you, and blah, blah, blah. I have said this in numerous videos, and I even commented on one of my videos. I do not remember. <laughs> I don't know why, but I don't remember who that person is. So I don't know if it's, like, a real thing or if it's, like, a fake made-up thing. I'm assuming it's, like, a real thing, right? Um... Because there are people that I have sat next to and got to know and things like that. Just be like, hey, Judy, how are you doing? It's good to see you. I'm going to sit next to you and whatever. Um, I'd love to have a casino friend to go to the casino with every once in a while. I, I've said in videos, email me. My email is listed underneath each one. Tell me who you are. Say, this is, I, this is the machine that I used to sit next to you at. This is who I am. We used to play. I, I, my memory is not always great about things like that. The thing is, is that when I went with Valerie, I usually always like... I didn't really meet that many people that I knew with Valerie. It was before Valerie that I sat next to, like, a group of, like, four women that I knew. So I'm assuming it has to be somebody from that group. And I just don't... And we also had nicknames for each other. <laughs> That's the other thing. So somebody could say their name was Judy. And, like, I might have called them... Um, Judith or something. And it's not, it's not clicking. But if that person is out there and I used to play next to you and like we talked and stuff like that, please reach out to me. I mean, every once in a while it's interesting because back in the day I would have like somebody come up to me in a casino and they'd be like, oh my God, it's so good to see you. I watch your videos. But very, very rarely. And it would be like three o'clock on a Monday night. And I'd be like, oh my God, it's like we're both here at three o'clock in the morning. They'd be like, yeah, don't tell anybody. I don't tell anybody that I come. And I'm like, well, I say it in my vlogs, but not always, you know, or whatever. And, um, but people were always really, really nice to me. I'm thinking like the person that's leaving the comment, because I tried to look at the picture and I couldn't really tell from the picture, but it kind of looks like two people that I, and one of them wouldn't be the person that I sat, it would be somebody that I sat with at another place. They, they gave some identifying information the last time. They said that they used to come up there with somebody, but that person didn't go to the casino anymore. I think they might have said they got sick or something like that. That was what clued me in. I was like, okay, now I, I know who this person is. But please just email me if you're watching this and you want to ever, like, meet up to, at the casino. I would love to meet somebody there. And Valerie doesn't move north. I don't, Valerie, I have, like, she ain't coming to the casino no more. <laughs> when she goes to the casino up north, she don't come down here to the casino. And Valerie, I know you watch these vlogs. I even told Valerie, I said, why don't you come down here and I will get your hotel room. And I said, and then we can drive up to the casino and you can stay over. And she's like, <laughs> I'm like, girl, it's not like you live that far away. And I said I'd pay for a hotel room for you. <laughs> Valerie, that's just because I miss you, honey. I love you so much. We used to have so much fun getting our iced teas and talking and stuff like that. I do. That's what I miss. I don't really miss going to the casino. I miss 
having like a social outlet, you know, and like going to the Bowery or the, when I, back in the day when I went with my friend Lori that I used to go, she doesn't really go to the casino at all anymore. Um, she and her husband don't go at all. Um, back, it was in, I think it was in September I ran into somebody, that was when the last time I went with Valerie, I ran into somebody that knew Lori. Lori had been in one of my vlogs, I showed her and told her story and stuff like that. And Lori was somebody that I met at the casino and then we became really good friends. I saw somebody that we used to all play together, these like old machines back in the day, like butterflies and stuff like that. And they said that Lori and her husband don't come to the casino that much anymore, like every once in a blue moon. That's kind of how it was with everybody that I used to go up there and play with, you know? So I don't know. But anyway, I think I kind of just made my mind up that I'm not going to the casino tonight. <laughs> It's so weird because it's really not that far. It's like a 35 minute drive, but like sitting here on my front porch, like it seems so far away. And like I can just see myself sitting there at that machine, just like I had Lyft and Uber both just like going for at the same time for hours. And I'm like, I don't ever want to feel that again. All I wanted was to be home. I couldn't wait to be home. So anyway, well, the other thing was if I was going to do it, it would make more sense to like leave early, like now, and then at like midnight be done. That's a busy time at the casino. I like to go when it's very slow in the middle of the night. But if I'm gonna do it, you know, might as well do it when I can get a ride home. Then it'd be easy, probably between like 12 and one to get a ride home. Um, but I'm tired and I wanna take a nap. <laughs> I feel like I've kind of outgrown the casino a little bit. It was a period of my life that I had a lot of fun going up there and going up there with Valerie. And stuff. I just, I don't know. It's like I can remember like going to bars and stuff and being there and I mean, this is after I got sober and stuff like that. It was even when I was with Alex and just being like, I mean, this is fun, but I'm not having that much fun anymore. I could be at home watching a movie, you know, or be with the dogs or whatever. Like I almost kind of would rather do that. I remember like one time I said something to Alex. He's like, yeah, let's just go. Like we, we could be at home with the dogs watching a movie or something like this. this is not, you know? So anyway, probably sometime this summer though, I'll go to the casino again. It'll probably be, it's always, I try to plan it on like a day that I literally have nothing the next day. And like, and also like I have, don't care if I film videos or not that day. It's not a nice day where I'm going to go to the pool, you know, things like that. Like that's, that'll probably be the day that I decide to go to the casino. And it'll probably be like a last minute decision. And it'll also be where I'm fully prepared that if I get stuck at the casino for two or three hours waiting for a ride that I'm fine with that, you know? And it just is what it is. So yeah, I mean, I think like last time when I went, I kind of like figured out like when the rides start picking up between like five and 6 a.m. is when like the Uber rides start to pick up, which is super, super late. But I mean, is it though? I mean, I, I stay up sometimes till that when I get home. So if I got an Uber at 5.30 and got home by 6 and was in bed by 6.15. It wouldn't be any different that I stayed here, but it feels different. I don't know. I'll go to the casino when I feel like it. The other thing is I'm saving a lot of money by not going to the casino. I mean, that's a huge thing, right? It's a good thing. It's a huge thing. I never went to the casino like thinking I was going to walk out with a ton of money though. It's interesting because the last two times that Valerie and I went, I won both times pretty big. Um, and I was going to like save it and put it in my, some of my savings and some to pay off bills. I was like, no, buy something that you want with this. That's when I, I think I bought that Prada bag and, uh, and the sunglasses. Because I was like, I want to do something. This is the last time I'm going to the casino for a long time, so I want to do something fun with it. But I never went to the casino with like I mean, I would sit next to people that would be like, oh my God, I like spent all my bill money. And I was like, okay, that makes me sad for you. Like, I never did that. Like, whatever I took, I always knew like, I probably would lose. Like, I just kind of went into it with that mentality, you know, that I wasn't gonna walk out a winner. And if I did, I did, and that was fun and that was great. But I never went into it thinking I was gonna, you know, like come out that I was gonna like double my money or, I mean, I never went into it with that mentality. I went into it like, I'm going to have some fun for, you know, a couple hours at a casino and I'll probably walk out having lost all my money. It's really what I thought, you know? Um, but yeah. Oh, so books that I wanna get. Okay, so I already have Treasure Island, um, which watching On Golden Pond made me think of that. I don't think I've ever read Treasure Island. Maybe as a kid, but I don't remember. The other one I don't, I think I have it down in the basement. 
but I don't love the copy of it, which was why I've never read it. Um, Carlos and Liliana gave me, got me a gift certificate to uh, Nordstrom and Barnes and Noble. So I want to use the Barnes and Noble gift shop or a uh, gift card. But, and then Alex's aunt and uncle gave me a gift card from Nordstrom. Oh no, Alex's mom got me a gift card from Nordstrom. And Alex's aunt and uncle got me like this really cool water bottle thing to take to the pool. Um, like something new that had just come out, so that was really nice. Um, but I want to, I, I don't know that I've ever read Swiss Family Robinson. I feel like I have, but I don't really remember it. I don't know that I've ever even seen the movie, but I remember going to it at Disney World back in the day when you could walk through that tree, and I was like, I love that so much. So I feel like I want to watch that, or read that, and I cannot find my copy of The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath, and I don't know why. I was watching something... I feel like it was a TV series, not a movie. And the girl was reading the bell jar. Her mom like picked it up and looked at it. What was that? Or some character picked it up and somebody else was reading the bell jar and kind of like looked at it and threw it. I was not like I it's interesting when I read the bell jar. I was I don't I can't remember when I how old I was when I read it. High school, maybe college. I don't remember. I don't remember being as moved by it as I was. Uh, was <laughs> as I was by the story of um, Sylvia Plath and so my mom my mom's master's degree is in English and she focused her um, like master's dissertation on bereavement and grief and I can remember my mom took a lot of classes on like death and dying and like one of the classes that she took a class that one of the classes that she took focused a lot on it was everything from Elizabeth Kubler-Ross hospice dying the you know understanding death and dying I think that's what Elizabeth Kubler-Ross's book is called on death and dying um and but she also read like the biographies of like Sylvia Prath and Aunt, I think Anne Sexton was the other poet that tried to take her life um or took her life and I can remember, like, being in, like, junior high or high school, when, talking to my mom about both of them as poets. Why do I... Is Anne Sexton the other one? Am I getting that wrong? Um, and so I remember... Poet. Anne Sexton poet. Yeah, she was the one that took her life, too. Oh, she was friends with Sylvia Plath because she wrote a book called Sylvia's Death. Yeah, I remember it now. Okay, wait, here it is. Anne Sexton was an American poet known for her highly personal confessional verse. She won the Pulitzer Prize for poetry in 1967 for her book, Live or Die. Her poetry details her long battle with bipolar disorder, taking her life tendencies and intimate details from her private life, including relationships with her husband and children. Um, oh, wow. Okay. Do you know, I don't know that I've ever read that book. Maybe I'll get that book, too, and read it. Um, I don't remember being as moved by the bell jar as, like, friends of mine were. Friends of mine read the book and were just, were like, so moved by it. I remember reading it and being like, I don't get what the big deal is about this book. I'm not talking about, like, the end of the book. I remember how the book ends. I'm talking about, like her moving to New York, and be, like, I, she becomes, like, a receptionist and wants to be a journalist or something like that, right? Isn't that what it's about? And I just remember it being, like, I remember it being boring, if you want to know the truth, for it being, like, this phenomenal book about... So, I don't know. I feel like I have to kind of, like, I want to reread it, The Summer of the Bell Jar. That's another book that I want to get. Um, so, yeah. I need to get back to just, like, sitting out here for an hour every night and just, like, reading physical copy books. I've been reading the Walking Dead graphic novel, but that's not what I mean. I've got to finish those Raymond Chandler and Jill McCorkle short story books. I, like, I love them. When I sit down and I make a cup of coffee and I sit out here and I just read it, like, I love it. And I light some candles. Um, I need to do that. 
I haven't lit my Stevie Nicks and Fleetwood matte candles yet. I want to like sit out here and light them and just like, um, I have some incense. I, I never, I used to burn incense all the time. I never burn incense anymore. So I want to light those candles and burn some incense. Alex absolutely, he cannot stand incense at all. His mom lights it every once in a while. He cannot stand it. Um, so I want to light some out here and listen to some Fleetwood Mac and Stevie Nicks with those candles lit. I thought that would be really fun. That's one thing I want to do this summer. So the three neighbors we're talking about, Alex has like a big like screen, green screen for projector and stuff. So we keep on talking about like once in July and once in August, like they would have like their kids over and friends and like she would have like, you know, some of her close friends. We would each have like four or five people. And then we would all have our chairs like in the back. That she and I were talking about having like a, like a little pool out there, like, you know, put your feet in kind of pool and um, sit out in the back. And then Alex would put up a screen and we would watch some movie. We were actually talking about like Jaws and Jaws 2 would be kind of fun to do, but different kinds of like old movies. And then like each of us have like, you know, like sh they could make food, we could bring food. They could, we're not gonna make food, but like, you know, charcuterie trays and stuff. Then we could all like, you know, eat with each other and whatever. I thought it would be fun if we did that, that Alex and I could make a bunch of popcorn like in brown paper bags or get the paper, like you, I think at Dollar Tree you can get the popcorn bags and then have the big candy bars like for, and we could have like a real concession stand out there. I thought that would be really fun. So we want to do that this summer too. Um, she and I also talked about, and Alex and I also talked about this too, doing like a picnic one day, just like in the backyard, like setting up a blanket. I think that would be fun. So that's July. I'm really excited about it. So excited about July. And this is the last day of June. And yesterday was my birthday and I'm 52 and one day and my mother-in-law, her birthday was today and it was good. Yesterday was great and today has been a great day and now I'm going to go inside and um, get this vlog going, get it rendered and relax a little bit. I actually cannot believe I have vlogged this long today. So I wanted to make my vlogs a little bit longer, but it feels like I've only been vlogging out here for like 15 or 20 minutes. It doesn't seem like, I think I've been vlogging for like an hour. Well, I stopped the battery, so I don't know how long it was when I stopped the battery, but like it says 21 minutes and 57 seconds. So that plus whenever I stopped the battery, I don't remember how long that was. Am I almost at an hour and a half? That's crazy time. That's crazy time. It's crazy town. Anyway, all right. I'm gonna get, I also have to finish Dark Matter. I might do that tonight. I might finish The Worst Roommate Ever and Dark Matter tonight. That might be my goal. Anyway, um, and then those reviews will be up on Peter Watches TV this week. So, um, I hope that you guys are having a magically amazing Sunday and a magically amazing last day of June and that you are getting refreshed, rejuvenated, relaxed, and renewed for the week ahead and the month ahead, the new month. And um, if nobody else has told you this today, you, you can start your day over, I was going to say. I love you. And um, remember these three very important things. One, you can, start your, you can start your day over whenever you want, or your week, or your month if you need to, or your summer. Start your summer over. Two, practice random acts. I just remembered I want to read those damn Witch's Sister books, too. I got to bring that off. I, I found out where the first one is. I couldn't find it. It's on the bookshelf. So I got to, like, did I already take it off the bookshelf? I have, like, 15 books in the kitchen that I'm, like, trying to attempt to read. I just got to sit down and start reading them. Two, practice random acts of kindness, but shh, don't tell me one. And three, most importantly, make sure that you reach out to somebody and let them know how much they mean to you. Like I always say, you might be putting a smile on their face. You might be changing their day for the better. You might be making them happier, and you might be making them feel not so all alone. Also, be kinder to one another. Love one another a little bit more. Oh, my God. How'd you get free, honey? Well, come here. Laura? Oh, hi, honey. How'd you get free? Did your mama let you free? Okay, you stay right here. Hold on. <laughs> Let's call your mama real quick. <gasps> You're such a good girl. Yes, you are. You're such a good girl. Okay, well, I'm gonna take her back next door, okay? Yeah, such a good girl. Stay right here with me, honey. Okay, stay right here with me. Um, and be kind to one another, love one another a little bit, little bit more, and also be kinder and love yourselves a little bit more because if you're kinder to yourself and you love your, if you're kinder to yourself then you'll be kinder to others. And if you love yourself more then you will love others more as well. I love you guys so much and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Love ya. <laughs>